All right, today we're going to be talking about a topic called cell regulation. How do we try to control the rate at which cellular reproduction occurs? And so the essential question we want you to think about is, can you describe how the cell cycle is regulated? Because not all of our cells go through this process at the same rate. For example, our muscle and nerve cells never go through mitosis after they mature. We have cells in our liver that go through this process maybe once per year, and our skin cells and intestinal cells every few hours. And so when we look at this, we really want to know why do cells continue to grow and divide? And if we added to that, maybe at slightly different rates. Sometimes it's because they need to repair or replace themselves if you get injured. Or maybe it's because they just need to reproduce more cells. Your book talks about this process as being the three R's. And so one of the things we want you to understand is if one of the purposes, if we go back here just a minute, is to repair and or slash replace cells, what happens to those cells when they're being replaced? Um, there is a process in biology, in cytology, that we call apoptosis. It's kind of got a goofy name, but essentially what it is, is a process where a cell can break itself down. It's a process of programmed cell death. Um, when there is a signal that's triggered in your body, when a cell becomes stressed, that cell undergoes a series of controlled steps to self-destruct. That process plays a key role in developing a healthy organism by shaping the structures and tissues and organs that are going to be developing inside of them, um, whether it be plants or in animals. And the pictures at the bottom of the screen kind of show you different limbs forming in different organisms as they are growing in utero and your body checks to make sure that they grow correctly. And so here is a picture of the process of apoptosis where it shows in the beginning, step one, a healthy cell. But if all of a sudden that cell finds itself in an environment that is causing damage to it or something just isn't happening right, it becomes stressed, then that cell starts to shrink. And as it shrinks down, it starts to form these blebs or projections that are coming off along the edges. Um, once that happens, it's a signal to enzymes to come and break down the nucleus within that cell. And then it emits signals to attract what we call macrophages. Um, macro is one of our roots that means big, Phage means to eat. So these are white blood cells that come in and kind of destruct or break down the cell into its tiny little pieces. And then the macrophages recognize those cell parts and remove them from the body. So kind of a complicated process, but one that's necessary to keep our bodies alive. So how do cells know when to divide? Well, we have this process that helps regulate everything. There's proteins or enzymes in our body that make sure that this problem, that this pro process happens as it should. Um, the first type of proteins are called internal regulatory proteins. These are proteins we have inside of the cell to check to make sure that things have happened correctly. An example of these types of proteins are called cyclins. Um, these are proteins that detect if chromosomes have been replicated correctly uh, during that interphase process and when the cell is ready to divide. And so an example of that is something that's called the CDK protein. This is a protein that triggers the cell to move from the G1 to the S to the G2 and the M stages in interphase and mitosis. And so just like you guys may, if I give an analogy, may write an English paper, before you turn that English paper in, you might have somebody proofread it. Well, these internal regulatory proteins are much like the proofreaders. They're checking to make sure that what happened inside of a cell happened correctly, and then it kind of gives it a green light to move on to the next stage. And so this is just a picture that kind of shows some of the different cyclin proteins we have inside of our cells. For example, the G1 and the S cyclin works right at the end of the G1 stage and it checks to make sure that the cell has grown correctly and duplicated all the organelles inside so that it's ready to move on to the S phase. And so that's why you would find its concentration being the highest right at the end of the G1 or beginning of the S phase to check to make sure what happened should have actually happened. Then it allows the cell to move on to the next phase, which is the S phase. And then the S cyclin protein checks to make sure that you got it. The DNA was 
copied correctly. And so each cycling has a job to do in this process. Um, another example that I usually tell my students about is a P53 protein that blocks the cell cycle if DNA becomes damaged. We all hope our cells stay healthy like this, but if our cells have an excessive amount of DNA damage inside of it, instead of allowing that cell to continue to make copies of itself in cellular division, this tumor suppressor or P53 protein signals and helps start apoptosis to get rid of that cell so it can't continue to produce more and create a tumor which could then become cancerous. And so we've got these regulatory proteins inside our cells, and we also have regulatory proteins outside of our cells. They direct the cell to either speed up or slow down in the cell cycle process. And so these external regulatory proteins we call growth factor proteins. It's a group of proteins that can stimulate the growth and cause these cells to maybe speed up a little bit, and they play an important role in wound healing and the in the development of creating a healthy body. If any of you have been injured in your sports um, and maybe been injured for a while, you have growth factor proteins. There's one called the PDGF, otherwise known as the platelet-derived growth factor. This one duplicates your red blood cells, which we know carry oxygen, and that helps increase the healing process at a much faster rate than would on its own. So they all play an important role in keeping our bodies healthy. And so here's the million dollar question, how do cells know when to divide? Well, your brain and your hormones kind of control this process. And so together they act like checkpoints to make sure that everything is happening as it should. And so these proteins check and kind of give your body a green light so that the cell can move on to the next stage. And if things didn't happen correctly, they give it a red light. So much like a signal at a stoplight, if it's green, it means you can go. And if it's yellow or red, it means it has to stay there longer in the current phase um, or apoptosis happens if it can't be fixed. And so the first checkpoint comes at the G1 stage where it tells the cell if it's ready to divide or not. The cell certainly must be healthy and it just has to be large enough where it's made enough copies of the internal organelles within the cell. And if so, it gets the green light to move on to the S phase and interphase. And if not, that cell is given a certain amount of time to grow and get a little bit bigger. And if it doesn't at a certain point, it goes through apoptosis. Some of our cells don't even get to this point because they go into that G0 phase where they rest for the rest of their life. Um, at the beginning of the video, we talked about muscle cells and nerve cells doing this. All right, and then the second checkpoint is the DNA synthesis checkpoint, where it occurs in the S phase, where we're checking to make sure that our DNA is copied correctly. If they are, it's given the green light and it goes to mitosis. If not, we try to repair the DNA, and if it can't, we go through apoptosis. All right, and finally, the last checkpoint is at the mitosis stage. They're asking or checking these proteins, is everything organized? And in this case, we're talking about our chromosomes. Were our chromosomes able to get lined up correctly in metaphase? Were those chromosomes split apart correctly in anaphase? Um, did everything happen like it was supposed to? And if so, it's given the green light and that cell can move on to the third and final stage, cytokinesis. And if not, the cell is eliminated. Okay, so what happens if our cell's growth becomes uncontrolled? Meaning it just starts to divide way too quickly and just divides all by itself at an extremely fast rate. And or if our cells become unresponsive to the signals that allow cell, the regulatory process of cell growth to occur. The answer is we can develop cancer. We have checkpoint proteins that regulate cellular division, but these proteins too can have mutations or be mutated just like any other thing in our body. And so if those become mutated, it will allow them to function either improperly or not at all. And the cell regulation process is disruptive and uncontrolled growth of cells may result, which is what we call cancer. Anytime you have cells growing out of control, it kind of forms this clump or group of cells, and we call that a tumor. 
And so some mutations cause an overproduction of these regulatory proteins. And if there's too many proteins being produced of that specific kind, it's much like stepping on the gas um, in a vehicle. It makes your car go faster. Well, if your body overproduces these regulatory proteins, it can cause your body to just divide too quickly. And so these mutations in you and I and other animals or plants can happen spontaneously, or it could be the result of, defect, of a defective gene that got passed on to you, or it could be the environment in which you are in. For example, the sun can cause our cells um, to change and we can develop skin cancer. So there's a lot of things that can cause us to develop tumors in our life. Um, but unlike normal cells, cancer cells do not respond to the normal controls of growth um, and division. And so by dividing uncontrollably, cancer cells form tumors and can spread throughout the body. If someone you know has had to go to the doctor to get checked to see if they have a mass in their body, there's a couple of terms that you want to be familiar with. One of them is benign. This means that that tumor has not spread, which is best case scenario when you're going into the doctor. Unfortunately, tumors can also be malignant, which means they can invade and destroy the surrounding tissue in an area, which makes your body obviously unhealthy. The other term that we have to worry about is one that's called metastasis, or we say something has metastasized. That's when cancer cells move throughout the body to form other tumors. This means it has the ability to spread and it has spread and started to form new tumors in other parts of your body. And so to kind of explain this to you, um, I took some pictures from your book. You know, here are some skin cells that kind of look healthy. They all are normal, except for this one in this black box. This one has an abnormal shape and size. And so if its regulatory proteins have been damaged, it can just tell that cell to kind of grow out of control, multiply and divide. And then you have a whole bunch of cells that build up. And this is what we call a tumor. And so we hope that this tumor would stay right here, but this is a scary part with cancer. If even just one of these cells breaks free, that abnormal cell, especially if it's close to the bloodstream, can get into your blood vessels. And then once it gets in your bloodstream, it can travel really truly to any part of your body. And then it can start to grow uncontrollably again there and form another tumor somewhere else. So that's the scary part with cancer. Um, there's a video and animation here that you can watch later if you want to learn a little bit more about that. And we're going to do a web quest on cancer as well. And so obviously as human beings and animals, we're trying to find a cure for cancer to prevent these cells from growing uncontrollably. And so in order to do that, we have to stop the cell cycle in some cells, but not interfere with this process in other cells that are healthy. And that's a scary thing. A lot of the drugs that we have today fight off the bad cells and it kills them, but it's also fighting off our good healthy cells at the same time and killing them. And so this can happen in plants, it can happen in animals. We're trying to kind of just show you some pictures of what it looks like in plants. And we're going to learn more about this, as I said, when we do a web quest. All right. Thank you, everybody.